More than 100 people were killed in two explosions near the grave of Qasem Soleimani. In Iran, thousands had gathered to remember the Iranian general who was killed by a U.S. drone four years ago. For more on this, let's bring in retired General H.R. McMaster. He's CBS News foreign policy and national security contributor and served as national security advisor under former President Trump. General, it's good to be with you again. Who, would, who could be behind this kind of attack? Who are the list of likely suspects? Hey, John, it's, it's, it's great to see you. I think what's most likely is this is some, some uh, jihadist terrorist organization, uh, like previous attacks that you've seen in, in Iran. And it is, it is likely an organization tied to or connected to the Islamic State or al-Qaeda. I think that's what's most likely. In your memoir, Battlegrounds, you describe Soleimani as the, quote, scourge of the Iranian people. Can you both remind us who he was? And also, one thing that's always puzzled me, why did Iran never retaliate for what was a pretty extraordinary action by the U.S.? Well, John, he is a purveyor of, of death and suffering uh, for people all across the Middle East. But, of course, what he's done in his 22 years as a leader of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps Quds Force, he built himself up to... Some people think the most second most powerful person uh, in Iran, second only uh, to the supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei. And, and what, what he has done across the Middle East is he has stoked this, this cycle of sectarian warfare, or you know, what, what uh, in Arabic, uh, fitness, uh, from Yemen to, to Iraq, uh, to Syria, to Lebanon. And he supported a range of, of terrorist organizations, uh, including Hezbollah, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. And this is the, his strategy has been to, to form this so-called axis of resistance, where these groups, they share expertise and terrorist capabilities between them. And, and, uh, and, and the, the idea is push the United States out of the region. You have to remember, Soleimani was killed on January 3rd after a U.S. Uh, citizen was killed on the mm. 27th of December. And 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 uh, and John, there was there was a retaliation. They fired about 16 uh, missiles at the Al Assad Air Base uh, after Soleimani's death, uh, wounding a, a large number of, of Americans. So, you know, I think what you see with Soleimani is somebody who was able in those 22 years to build an extraordinary network of death and terror across the region, and his victims. You have mainly been other Muslims, Sunni Muslims in particular, but all, all Muslims in the, in the region. And, and really, his strategy is to expend, I don't know, every Arab life he can, every mm. Palestinian life he can, uh, in, in an effort to drive the United States out of, out of the region as the first step in destroying Israel. I mean, that's really what they're trying to do. And this is it's what it's called the ring of fire strategy around Israel. And, and you, see, you see that being activated now. You see what Soleimani has built being activated uh, against Israel, uh, against the, their Arab neighbors, uh, and, and against the United States with these attacks on shipping and the 100-plus attacks on, on U.S. facilities over the past several months. And, General, I have one more question for you, which is that ever since this attack um, on Wednesday, there's been um, speculation that this will, will cause more complications in the already high tensions in the Middle East. How do you see that happening? If you were in your old job, what are, you, what are the dominoes that might fall or the collateral events that might happen as a result of this attack? John, it's, it's already happening. This is already a regional war. You could say it's growing into a, a, a war with, with global implications. And I, I think what is, is already happening is you have Israel fighting a four or five front war, uh, not only in Gaza, but also in the West Bank. You have to remember the, you know, the killing today uh, of uh, Salah al arori uh, he, he was mo most responsible, uh, the most responsible Hamas uh, so-called commander uh, for stoking terrorist action and, and, and building a terrorist infrastructure in the West Bank. So Israel's already fighting in Gaza, the West Bank. You saw the strikes in Syria recently where Iran uh, is, is building a proxy army in military capabilities and continued attacks by Hezbollah, uh, and then, of course, the Israeli strike a against uh, al Roy today. So what you're going to see is, is a continuous expansion of this conflict. We see in Yemen now the shut shutdown of shipping in the Bab al-Mandeb. And what's not been reported, John, is what is what uh, Iran has been doing in Iraq, mm. uh, trying to trying to, to push some of these militias 
in a way that will alienate again the Sunni Arab and other populations. This is under a guy named Case Kazali, uh, who is who is is one of their main agents uh, in Iraq. Hey, John, you know I think the Supreme Leader, you know he's in his he's in his 80s. Mm. He he wants to cross a few things off his bucket mm. list, and I think one of them is destroy Israel. And I think we're seeing just the opening mm. uh, of what will be a sustained campaign by the Iranians, one that will oh. not stop until we act like we know what the return address is, John. Mm. Retired General H.R. McMaster, thank you so much. Thank you, John.